It's me, your girl, Melipona, here with a brand new Stardew Valley challenge. I took a lot of time playtesting and designing this challenge. It's called the 100 Days Drought Challenge. And the main point of this quest is to simulate living in southwest Colorado where I live. I want the story to feel like there's a city board in Pelican Town that votes every year on how much water right access you have. My farm starts off with having no impact on the community and therefore no impact overall. And they literally just have to grow their farm within the very strict water restriction rules that Pelican Town has set out. And those are no sprinklers, no wells, only the basic watering can of squares that you can use. The luck mechanic comes into play by having Wellwick's Oracle be a drought report. So the very unlucky days, which is the spirits are very displeased, that day is a complete drought. It's a bit unpredictable and it's pretty hard and your very first spring, you're probably not going to get hardly any crops out, but hey, that's the challenge. There are different tiers of rewards if you make a big enough impact on the community. Basically, it's just a very involved and convoluted 100 day challenge, which, you know, for legal reasons is 100 day, but I actually play the full year before the scoring metric comes into play. So yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna do this 10 days at a time because I feel like that's the easiest way to really showcase a lot of the difficulties while still keeping it watchable and manageable. So I decide that I am going to pick a randomized farmer. I just picked one that looked like me. Uh, I chose the gray tabby like always. My favorite thing is water. And I did rock, paper, scissors for e either the hilltop farm or the forest farm and unfortunately I got hilltop but I guess that means we get some early copper which is always useful so here we are starting in the game my goal for day one is to get a bunch of fiber and get a bunch of hay with the better hay mods it allows you to get uh, hay directly in your inventory you don't need a silo and that's important for a couple of reasons but the main reason it's important is because day one I need to get a compost bin on my property because it takes 28 days for compost to go through its full cycle meaning if I want to be able to harvest anything in the summer I am definitely going to need a compost bin so I go to Robbins I've got my wood <laughs> and lo and behold i actually don't have enough a compost bin is 150 and not 50. so that was a bit of a setback but i decided hey you know i've still got the energy i've got the time i was gonna hit the ground running but i need to get this wood so i just chopped down the wood next to robin's hopefully i can meet a couple of people if they're hanging out but my main goal here is Look, I need 150 wood. I'm running low on energy, but this compost bin has to be on my lot, like number one. Compost is super important in this game because compost uh, relieves the ravages of pestilence and which decimate your crops and also just the drought that can kill your crops every day. So I finally go back to Robbins, I finally get the compost bin, and I now just have to fill it. And filling it is difficult because you need a certain amount of browns, a certain amount of greens, and fiber is neutral. So my strategy is to use a fair bit of fiber just to pat it out, and then use hay for the browns, which is pretty difficult to obtain, but with a better hay mod, it's a lot easier. So I'm just going around my farm and I'm just trying to get a lot of hay because you need about 60 of each fiber and hay. And I am determined to get this done today. 
Um, I don't succeed, but I was determined to do it anyway. <laughs> Since I have no energy, scything takes no energy by the way, so I spent all my energy chopping trees. You'll see that I have absolutely no energy at the bottom. Look at that. I have zero out of 270 energy. That is the kind of efficiency you need to succeed at a challenge as brutal as this. My unusable maze of a farm is making it impossible for me to get to this last little bit of grass, which I desperately need, and <laughs> I just can't get there. I even just try to reach it from around the rock in pure desperation. So I take my hay and I take my fiber of the compost bin, and we're about half full, and that's 78 fiber and almost 60 hay at the beginning, or almost 50 hay, and <laughs> We're not very close at all. So that means that the remaining amount, luckily, are forageables. And forageables add a lot of green, and they also add a lot of bulk to the compost pile. So you'll see it go up pretty quickly the more forageables I add. Um, but I'm still not quite there. I'm still almost three parts away. And that's day one. I'm glad that I got my foraging level up because what I've learned a key strategy to this for foraging, you have to sprint to level three, then sprint to level seven, then sprint to level nine because one huge form of revenue in this challenge is going to be tappers. And they take forever. They, they're relatively resource heavy with two copper and 40 wood. You need to just be tapping almost every tree you can get because <laughs> it is one of the only consistent revenue streams throughout the season since you need to supplement your farm. Kind of in that same vein, sell your sap. You need to start collecting clams and coral really early because they are used for higher grade fertilizers and you're gonna need a lot because with the combination of fertilizers and compost, you can actually get some good stuff going on. As you'll see, I'm desperate for forageables at this point. I go all the way down there and there are absolutely no spring onions. So back to my main point, sell sap. Tap your trees and sell your sap. Save almost everything else for fertilizer, but sap is in these first 10 days, one of the most reliable money sources you're gonna get. For whatever reason, I always hoard sap in like every other playthrough, but I never even really use it. <laughs> so for the most part, I've just decided the best use for my sap is an early income stream. Normally I play on 25% profit margins, which means sap doesn't sell for anything. But since this is fully 100%, I am stoked to sell sap for money. In the meantime, I'm trying to complete some of these other quests, like meeting people of the town, meeting Demetrius, meeting Haley, meeting Sam. And I thought it was a really fun way for you guys to see their new portraits because I do play with the diverse Stardew Valley mod, which allows their portraits to look a little updated for the seasons and sometimes completely changes uh, the way that they present as far as their race and ethnicity. I don't know if you guys know this, but day three is always a rainy day. And uh, we have our first pestilence on the farm. So I have to completely destroy those crops or they'll spread. We also had one that was taken due to drought on a rainy day. So you guys get a little taste of my luck. I finally got enough forageables here on day three to start my compost bin. Yay! So we should have it ready in exactly a month. I decided to spend the rest of my day meeting some other people, um, chopping some wood. Y you've really got to maximize every single day, either with gift giving, mining, chopping down trees, meeting people, doing side quests. I mean, you really should go to bed with zero energy almost every single night. And just in time to meet Willie to get the bamboo pole which I promptly take out for a spin and catch my first fish. But that's basically how I spent my day and the rest of my energy was just fishing, chopping wood, trying to get extra wood so that I can unlock the forageable areas by the beach. And see, level up in foraging, level two. This quick leveling up of foraging to get to tappers is, I don't know, it's the best strategy I can give you guys to do it. It does help that we have the hilltop farm because we're gonna get early sources of copper without having to go to the mines. So that's what I spent the next day doing. I'm really, really close to leveling up foraging, so I've gotta start hoarding copper. 
and I do. I get some geodes, I get some copper, and I think it makes a lot of sense to get at least one level in every skill as early as possible. Um, but especially the most useful skills, which I would consider in this playthrough, mining and foraging, because you're just going to need a lot of resources. And I got to meet Leah. She's adorable. The diverse Stardew Valley mod makes her native. And that just makes so much sense to me. I just, it's weird when I see her non-native portrait now. Decided to go see if there were any spring onions and woo, who boy, did I get a lot today. Which was exciting because for the first three days in the game, finding any forageable was... I don't know. It was just like I couldn't find them. I went everywhere on the map. I ran around like all of the places and I couldn't find them. Um, and, you know, just continued to meet more people in the town. Uh, here I met Marnie, Caroline, and then Jody. And then I figured it was probably best to meet Vincent when his mom was like right by him because he does always say that he's worried about it so i figured having him in his mother's radius would be the most safe way to do it and finally met alex i'm just on fire with these introductions i love emily i love her tattoos and her seasonal attire i think she's adorable she's a uh, romani in this playthrough and her sister is white so I always kind of like I'm a mixed race person so I always kind of like if they have siblings that are different I kind of assume that they're mixed race too um, and I met Elliot and promptly gave him a gift he hated which you know I've romanced Elliot like a thousand times and tell me why I never knew he didn't like daffodils like tell me I hate daffodils too which is exactly the reason I get along with Elliot so well I'm telling you but how did I not know he didn't like them? I just trudge on with the day trying to meet everybody and thankfully I got to meet Maru. Her hair kind of looks like mine, which made me really happy. And she's super sciencey, so I feel like we would be friends. Um, and thankfully I also had the chance to meet her brother, Sebastian, who has a couple of different options in the diverse Stardew Valley mod, but I generally just choose his normal one with piercings and sometimes he wears reading glasses. I don't know. I just think it's the cutest. So another busy day with no energy, going to bed, leveling up that mining skill. I mean, these, it's only day four but we've got tons of levels and stuff and we're almost done with some of those really early important introductory quests another rainy day so that's two rainy days which i'm like beyond myself in luck clint comes and teaches us how to use the furnace and guess what the mines are open so we're no longer struggling for ore but great lots of pestilence i have to kill two of my beautifully beloved parsnips which is just par for the course for this mod but hey it's so it's so frustrating to have to do it you hate to see it you hate to see all the bugs come and devour your crops anytime it happens so I, I have um, better mixed seeds on as well which means that sometimes I can get rare seeds when I plant mixed seeds and it's just really helpful but it's not necessary for the challenge then I make my way down to the traveling cart. Nothing useful as normal, but you have to check it every time. It's so important if you want to finish the community center. And uh, then I restore the bridge to the foraging area, which is, like I said, super important. It can't be understated how important it is to unlock this as soon as possible because you need to start stockpiling coral and clams for different fertilizers. Side note, can somebody explain to me that that guy back there is not a mermaid? Because in my head, he has to be a mermaid. We didn't fix the bridge. He swam to get there, only comes out on rainy days, and he literally has an object called the mermaid pendant. So my head canon is he has to be a mermaid. Confirm it for me. I finally take the opportunity to go to the mines let me just say the rusty sword is the worst thing in the world. It couldn't even cut butter. I'm surprised it can even cut down fiber, to be honest. 
So finally I get the chance to go to the mines, focusing early on on things that I can donate to Gunther, because hopefully being able to finish the collection at least in part would impact the community positively. It really sucks that creating that first furnace takes so much copper because I could use those four copper bars. And look at that, we got lucky enough that we got a ruby, which normally in my games, I don't, I don't even, I have terrible luck. But as you can see here, a treasure slime pops up. So a ruby and a treasure slime on the first day in the mines is completely unheard of for me because I've literally never even seen a treasure slime before. And lo and behold, I get a pair of rubber boots, some wellies for Melly, and then another treasure slime on the same floor. But sadly, I could not get it to die, so I just had to run. We made it to level 10, which is good, but we didn't get that other treasure drop. So, you know, came back home, made the furnace, and then just went straight to bed because no energy. I think that was like one of the most efficient days. And look at that sap. So day six, day six of 10, and we've already got the mines open. We're already smelting stuff in the furnace. Hilltop farm coming in clutch. I'll, I'll be honest, even though I prefer the forest farm. Finally got the journal entry for the initiation. And you see it, my first parsnips are ready. And normally you get what, 15? And this time we got eight. So like half of my crops gone. Which is, you know, I think that's fairly realistic. I don't think that if you plant something, you can just expect the full harvest to come up every time. Maybe vanilla Stardew Valley got too easy for me and that's kind of what inspired this challenge. But really, I think I just wanted to experience the Fiero of doing something really, really hard and succeeding at it. And maybe my motivations are just too much of a gamer. But I'm, since I, finished all those quests early on, I was determined to meet everybody in the town. And I only had Harvey and Abigail left, and thankfully it was easy to meet both of them. It's Saturday, so Harvey was out taking a walk, and Abigail was just having breakfast with her mom. And uh, in this mod, Abigail is, she's chubby. I love it. And I don't know, it's nice to see someone who looks like me, but in this game, Abigail is just never nice to me. I mean, people always talk about Shane being mean, but Abigail always has like an attitude. Decided today was going to be giving people gifts, talking to people because I want to build strong relationships with people in the community. And that means whatever you think a head start is for like giving people gifts or talking to them, you need to like go back. Like <laughs> if you are not immediately reaching out to the community with the things that you harvest, the things that you find in the mines, you will never get any of them in a year. You'll never get any of their hearts up. You really need to be out there schmoozing people, which is a lot harder than it sounds because what? I made eight parsnips. So I have to give three of them away, if not all of them. Where are my profits? Frustrating, but necessary. And for some reason, even though it didn't trigger the first time I went into the town, it triggered the second time where I finally unlocked the community center. All I know is that we get to meet wizard now, golden scroll time, and uh, I know that'll happen tomorrow morning. So I'm just super excited for doing the bundles because honestly, it's one of my favorite parts of the year one game. And I know sometimes it takes people a lot longer, but in this playthrough, you really gotta make a splash with the community. So if you possibly can, you get points for every bundle you fill out up to almost 300 points. So it's very heavily incentivized by my point system to fill out the community center in one year. Then I head down to the beach and just miss Elliot, just completely miss him. The rush to get Elliot up to two hearts is real because when you can't enter into his cabin, you just never see him. He's a bit like me in the fact that he's reclusive, which may be another reason that we get along. We hate daffodils and we're both hermits. That's nice, right? Maybe that's why a crab makes a little home in his pocket because he's like a little hermit shell. Okay, I'm reading too deeply into what Concern Day wanted, but I love Elliot and how can I not? Yeah, I spent the rest of the day 
just donating stuff to the museum. I found some glass shards on the beach and then the stuff that we had mining. A real shame to just right off the bat donate that ruby to the museum, but I'm living a selfless life for the community working tirelessly, so I guess it makes sense even though I think there were like 260 or something and they're just so valuable as gifts too. Um, <laughs> I am determined to give Elliot this parsnip, like absolutely determined. And finally, he comes out and then give it to him. And then he tells me I would hate it in his cabin. So I guess that's why he doesn't let people in. And then it's five o'clock. It's gotta be, it's five o'clock somewhere. We're going to the mines instead of getting a drink. And leather boots mean sorry to my awesome color blocking and goodbye wellies. But, you know, um, the frustrating part of the mines is that you'll often be down there and just have to walk home in complete darkness, just bleeding out slowly until sleep, which miraculously heals you. So, I don't know. The mines are uh, pretty unforgiving when all you have is the rusty sword. Was it time well spent? I'm not even sure. It was time spent. Wake up, another day perfectly in time to learn stir fry which is you know useful because so earlier I said you need to sprint to level three for tappers you need to sprint to level seven can anybody guess why it's tree fertilizer peeps you need tree fertilizer to get to level nine because what's at level nine the cookout kit which is <laughs> Great for giving gifts, great for supplementing your need to go to the mines. No more, I have zero energy, and even though I'm efficient, it's impossible. And the last thing is, it lets you complete some bundles. So without having to do the 10,000 gold house upgrade, you can just use the cookout kit. So again, that sprint to three, seven, and nine, it's, it's important. And then I got summoned by Rasmodius. We know where this is leading, right? Um, leading us to be able to do those bundles. On day seven, which I feel like is a little bit late, I check the traveling cart. It's difficult because I don't have a lot of gold, but on the off chance that she's selling a truffle, it's just too expensive to upgrade both the coop and the barn in one year. So I need to buy a truffle if at all possible. So it's just a luck thing too. And you gotta roll that luck, that RNG. So I visit Wizard. We need him, despite his shady methods of capturing Junimos for no reason. And then he's all surprised about why they hate him. They are the most gentle, adorable creatures on the planet. And then he just traps them. And it's just like, please let them free. Please don't do this. Like, is this scene cringe for anybody else? Or is it just cringe for me? Because I absolutely hate watching this Junimo just suffer. And then of course I had to include this trippy scene for no reason where you're supposed to be getting the forest juice, gulping it down. And I don't know, Concerned Ape is, is definitely weird for putting it in, but I guess it makes sense. It's also Lewis's birthday. So I just get, gave him a parsnip. Parsnips are like, a surprisingly well-liked gift early on, and I've just been selling them in all my other playthroughs, but <laughs> I realize now that was foolish. Unlock the true potential of parsnips and give them as gifts. So, you know, I celebrate Lewis's birthday, then I go up and check the help wanted board, and what would you know it? Maru's requesting a parsnip, but I had just sold all of them, which next time I think I'm gonna hang on to more of them, but I'm able to go back home and fish one parsnip out of the shipping bin. These community quests are early gold supplement and they really help you build relationships with people. And for one parsnip, come on, easiest decision ever. So I get the parsnip, spend some more of my energy trying to level up foraging, which I do. Um, finally hitting level three, so tomorrow I'll be able to make tappers and then fulfill my quest to Maru, who is looking so adorable in her overalls. Yeah, you know, I like working on the farm. It's hard, but uh, I, I like I like it. No, I don't really like it. <laughs> and then you guessed it, it's 6 p.m. So what time is it? It's mines time. Now we're actually working on killing the slimes. Um, 
so we can sell those boots for 50 G. Um, and it's, it's, it's hard. It's killing slimes, even the green ones with the rusty sword is like so ever loving annoying, but it's all in, all in the name of good fun. If it was easy, it wouldn't be a challenge. Um, so my goals here for this mine run aren't necessarily to go deeper, which is always the goal. But in this specific one, I want to level up combat to level one and level up mining to level two. And again, this is another mod that I have, which this might interest you or not. I, you know, it seems like I have tons of mods. I really don't. I think I have like seven, but it's part of the upgraded UI mod to show how much experience points you are in the level. So it just allows you to get a better handle on when you're gonna level up, which is easier for me for timing, and I just don't like being in the dark about it. Like, tell me how much experience killing that bug was. Tell me how close I am to leveling up, concerned ape. Why are you hiding it? Do you have something to hide? <laughs> um, but I did, I succeeded in leveling up combat and then succeeded also in leveling up mining and getting more copper. So we made it to floor 13, and lo and behold, another copper vein, which was awesome. And I'm like, we have no energy, so let's go home until we find two topaz rocks, two of them. The reason I keep saying we is because it's really hard for me to do the mines on my computer. And uh, Ponderosa, who's someone who plays games about as much as me, which at this point is 20 to 30 hours a day, loves doing the mines and they're really good at it too. She volunteers to, to be my hands for the mine. So I say we when I'm talking about the mines, specifically because it is a we. I'm kind of backseat mining and she's front seat mining. I don't know, but it just, it works. We got the tapper, which is maybe my favorite invention in, in this whole game. And look at that. Three levels up. Three in one day. Foraging, combat, and mining. And now it's day eight, and by day eight, we've got levels in everything. Well, we're about to get a level in farming. And another rainy day. Tell me how many times have any of you ever played this game? where you have gotten three rainy days in the first 10 days. Like, what? Amazing, amazing for me. I just felt really blessed. Um, so if you don't know this, this is another hot tip. Uh, the best days to plant are and use your hoe are rainy days because it reduces the amount that you have to do by one third. You don't have to water. So I try to save my sowing days for rainy days, I think it's an efficient use. I'm gonna spend the rest of this rainy day just uh, meeting people. And the first person I meet is Penny, who is so freaking cute in her little raincoat. <laughs> and has this to say, the raindrops are really loud on the roof of our home, it's soothing though, which I think is like sad and sweet because I grew up in a very similar situation and it is soothing. It's loud, but it is soothing. So I really, I don't know. I feel like I want to make Penny a friend because this might be Stardew Blasphemy, but I like never ever talk to her in the game. I don't know why, she's not annoying to me or anything. I just never do it. And most importantly, I finally have five copper bars which means tool upgrade. Um, and I chose to go with the ax first. Y'all know why? Because I'm obsessed with foraging in this playthrough. And a copper ax is gonna mean so much more experience, just so much more. Uh, <laughs> and I finally find a horseradish, which means I can complete the spring foraging bundle. I'm telling you guys, some things I've been super lucky, all the things that Ponderosa does, the mines, and like the weather, not that Ponderosa controls the weather, but who knows? Um, and the foraging, uh, I've been super unlucky and probably that's just because I've been the one doing it, but it's good to get that bundle done because then I can start putting my crab pot bundle in and all the fish that I catch since my favorite thing in this game is fishing. Well, it's not my favorite thing, but it's close. And then we've got a whole rainy day ahead of us. So let's try to dive into the mines. And we're just trying to go as far down as we can 
and finish that initiation quest. So hopefully if we ever get any money, we can buy a new sword. Finally, 10 slimes. 10 slimes and no energy. So it's 10 p.m. now. We've been in the mines for 12 hours. We're only on level 19, which is okay progress from 11 to 19. But we are so close to level 20. And we have no energy and we cannot find a ladder down. This was one of the most infuriating bad luck rolls I have ever seen in this game. I know it's an unlucky day, but still. You gotta empathize with the struggle at least a little bit. This is something I've never done, which is lose energy in the mines. Normally I die from health, but being at like passing out exhausted levels, that's never happened to me in the mines before. Apparently what happens when you pass out from exhaustion is you just get sent to the clinic, but apparently it's cheaper. It was only 26 gold. Since the previous day went into exhaustion, I'm gonna take it easy today. I'm just going to plant the rest of my mixed seeds, this small, what is this, 12, which isn't even half of what we can do, but I'm just losing gold every time I plant something and it dies. Try to keep it small and flexible early on, um, but we have no energy. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, the, the goal for today, we're just going to plant a little bit. I'm going to make some tappers and put them on trees. And that, and then we're, we're on the road. We're on the path to making money, finally, in this game. I think we get four, four tappers out today, which is pine, maple syrup, syrup again, and oak. Since we don't have a lot of energy, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna fish, and promptly fish up a treasure and a chub, which, with my absolutely zero fishing skill right now, <laughs> it, it was pretty brutal, but I managed to do it. Fish fear me, and that makes me happy. So our treasures weren't that great though, we just got some mixed seeds, but hey, I'm not gonna turn down seeds at the beginning. But what I'm trying to do desperately is fish up a Joja Cola. And I realize that's probably not gonna happen unless I'm on my farm. So I go back to my farm and level up in fishing and then try really hard to fish up a Joja Cola. And I get it, it only takes me the better part of the day. So <laughs> I take my disgusting fish up can of Coke and I wander around town until I find Sebastian to give it to him. And I'm like, hey, yo, you said you wanted this Coke. I fished this up for you. I hope it's disgusting. But yeah, he likes me more. And I didn't have to give him a quartz, which is what I normally do. And here we go, Abby, again, in a bad mood. And then immediately I'm talking to Shane, so I'm just a glutton for punishment. It's weird to be in a room and talk to like five people and the only person who was nice to you was Sebastian. Am I right? I don't know, maybe the rainy day had them in poor spirits or whatever. So I decide to, right after I leave the Star Drop Saloon, take a quick trip up to the Adventurer's Guild, sell my wellies, to which Marlon greets me with, she's back. So that's strange. But, all right, I am back, I guess. Maybe he is aware of the fact that this is far from my first playthrough. And he's just welcoming me as my soul and my entity. That's what I think. I check the monster eradication goals because I never do those. Like, literally never. But they're really important for the community, right? Like, if we can get rid of some monsters, people in the community are going to love us. So... We've got to work really, really hard to try to kill as many monsters as we can, or sorry, eradicate. Um, and then I go outside and fish with my remaining energy reserves and promptly fish up back-to-back -back treasures. Treasure number one um, coming in at a couple pieces of copper, which I'm not gonna say no to, especially this early on in the game. And then treasure number two, which you'll see me get here in a bit, but I'm not gonna spoil it. <laughs> I end up getting some coal to match. Um, so yeah, I got some coal and some copper and another Joja Cola. Look at that, more trash coal. I think this is my third Joja Cola that I have fished up in this game. 
I leveled up in fishing, always good to get that bigger bar. I don't know, I feel like that's a pretty lucrative day, right? 500, almost 500 gold, pretty good. And so, as y'all know, I'm doing this in 10 day spurts. We finally wake up on day 10 of spring. This day, it, it, I feel like it lasted forever. I had so much to do, and it was just like <laughs> scene after scene of things happening for me. So first, the ever beautiful Marnie came in, um, and I had the chance to uh, adopt a cat, which is always important for me because I rescue cats IRL, I have four cats. I chose Indy like I always do, naming it after my little gray tabby. And, uh, you know, I, I never know when this scene is going to kick off, but it just so happened to kick off on the longest day of Stardew I think I've ever played in my life. And guess what? Not only is it the longest day, but it's a bad luck day, so I can only use whatever water I have left in my watering can, and thank goodness I have enough to water the rest of my plots. But you can't, you can't fill up your watering can from the farm <laughs> with two parsnips. We finally level up our farming, which is the last skill somehow. I mean, we, we leveled up combat before we leveled up farming. I guess it goes to show how the balance is a little bit different um, in this game. I plant some more stuff, just two more parsnips and then immediately go to the community center to fill out some of those bundles. The crab pot bundle, which is, I think, pretty easy to fill out as long as you're lucky enough to get a crab drop when you're in the mines, and uh, some lake fish. I got the carp and the bullhead the day before. Really, out of all the fishing, the only ones that I think are pretty difficult to get are the ones that are locked. You need the bus to get this fish, or you have to go so far in the mines to get this fish. Um, and then I guess walleye is kind of hard. And then I finally got my copper axe. Such a big day. It's 9.30 a.m. and we've already got a cat, donated to like five bundles, got a copper axe, planted and harvested stuff, leveled up farming, we're donating to the museum, and then you will not believe this one crazy thing that she does next. No, for real, I spend the rest of the day uh, giving out tons of gifts. I mean, I think like <laughs> nine or 10 gifts, not that many, but a lot of gifts because I just happen to have extra stuff. Abigail is rude to me again. Giving more trash cola to Sam, who's adorable. I don't know why I think he's so cute with just a little bit of stubble. Giving a daffodil to Caroline, who actually likes them. A leek for George, who doesn't like anything, but that's his favorite thing. And then another parsnip for Elliot. I have to get him up to two hearts, like as early as possible, so I can keep giving him gifts. And then Emily told me something that was interesting. I've heard rumors of rare and powerful magic rings forged long ago by forgotten civilizations. I'm not sure if it's true or just a fairy tale. Um, I've never heard any of the characters in Stardew say that, and I, I guess I really liked that it added to some of the lore. But unfortunately, I didn't have a gift for her, so I just had to have a nice conversation. And I swear today was like, for an unlucky day, the luckiest spring onion day. And I, I think I got a spring onion for every gift I gave out and villager I talked to this week. I don't know, but I was like riding high. I spend the rest of the day chopping down trees and then, you know, I get it in my head. I think I can do one more tapper. So even though it's super, super late, and I have no energy, I decide to risk it all to put one more tapper on a tree and I'm all tapped out. And that's the only tapped out joke I'm going to make the whole series, I promise. But I thought it was a good way because I'm actually ending the video like this. <laughs> so, you know, thankfully we, we leveled up in farming and we can start off day 11 with some extra money and the possibility of finishing some more of those early quests. But overall, I feel like this first 10 days went so well. 
Like, I'm not gonna say I'm blown away by how good I am at playing this game, but in my test playthrough, the first 10 days were way more disastrous. I only got rain once on day three, because there's always rain on day three, and I had like three unlucky days. But I did catch a lot of rare fish in that playthrough, so I don't know. Maybe my luck in this file is just more compatible with the luck of the challenge overall. For just 10 days in Stardew Valley, we've got tons of levels, a good amount of money. I think we've already made almost 5,000 gold. We've got a copper axe. I think we've got three people at two hearts. I hope that I'll be able to keep up that high stakes momentum. I hope you guys are enjoying this challenge. For a more detailed explanation of the rules for this challenge, they're down below in the description. And yeah, if you try it, feel free to tag me, feel free to let me know, comment, like, whatever. I'm just really interested to see if you guys are up for the challenge of pretending that you're in a drought and have severe water restrictions for 100 days in Stardew Valley. So hopefully it was a good first video for it. And um, as always, this is the end.